So the sun is setting and with it, the last of our power for the day. Um, we've been almost two years on the sailboat with no generator. We've never charged our batteries in the last two years besides with the solar panels. So we're gonna go through um, all the basics of our battery system and the solar panels right now. Hi, my name's Micah. And this is my wife, Grace, and our two kids, Gabriel and Alana. We saw them growing up fast and wanted to see the world while they were still with us. So we fixed up a 37-foot aluminum catamaran, have been living on it for almost two years now. We've added Cypher to our family since we started. We've been exploring the oceans and reefs of the Florida Keys, but are getting ready to explore more of the Caribbean. Join us as we share more of our adventures with you. So these are residential panels. I have two here and then two over the dinghy. And, um, they are very large. Um, they are 24 volt um, solar panels and they are 280 watts each. So uh, we have a 24 volt system in our boat. So I just have them all running um, independently into the Vectron um, charge controller. No, not Vectron. I'll tell you what the charge controller is later. Um, it does make it so that um, if one of these is shaded they don't affect the others um, so that makes it a lot easier to collect solar but um, we haven't really had much problem as you see though our boom is all the way to the side and that actually makes a really big difference if we're going to have any power so Quick math altogether is a little bit over a kilowatt of solar power. And on average, what I heard before we got solar, and what seems to be mostly true, is you get about four times that throughout the day. So these this kilowatt of solar panels can produce about four kilowatts of power. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about batteries. So we have three Tesla S battery packs and they are 24 volt and they have about five kilowatt hours of power in them. Now ours is set up, I, I did a little bit of, I guess, mistake when I first started out. Um, I was setting it up and I bought the um, inverters and everything. We have two smaller inverters. One of them is a 2,000 watt peak, which means we only run about 1,000. And the other one is a 3,000 watt peak. And we only run, so that only runs about 1,500 continuous. Um, they're both 24 volt inverters, but normal 24 volt batteries will run power. Um, at the peak, it's gonna be more like 28 volts and at the lowest they'll be like 20. So inverters a lot of times won't run much lower than that. The Tesla battery packs have a voltage range of about a little about 19 to about 25. Um, they're very particular. You don't want to go over that or under that or you will ruin the battery packs completely and worst case scenario you could cause thermal runaway and they will burn up. Um, so we have some systems in place that make sure that that never happens and um, but the problem that I had was I set it up um, with these inverters and they cut off at a little over 20 volts so about 21 volts so i actually only use about 50 percent of the power in my battery bank now i said i had three um packs and they're five kilowatts each so we have about 15 kilowatts but i only use half like i said so we only use about seven and a half kilowatts um, from our battery bank and um, we can only charge up 
about four kilowatts a day. So we have a, a little under two full days of, of charge. Um, now, if it was ever an issue, I could just get another inverter that went all the way down to 19% and we could run it for, you know, four days of what these, these solar panels could charge. But um, it hasn't really been a problem. I can run my uh, window AC um, about a few hours a day um, or about one full day a week. <laughs> Usually is pretty low down and then it takes a while to build up to be where we will, you know, 100% where we want it to be. Um, but our system can't charge it that much faster anyway, so it's not like I would just use the AC a ton more if we, you know, had a different inverter. But um, let's go down and see the batteries and the system that we have. So it's, um, it's in our room. We'll come back to here later. This is the, um, all the gauges so that we can see what's going on. So these are our three battery packs. Now let's take a look over here. Um, this is our charge controller. It is a e Ep Ever um, 40 amp charge controller completely customizable. So I can set the voltage, I can set how much it will charge up to, how much it will um, allow me to discharge from. I don't actually run the discharge through here. I have a different system for that, which I'll just show you. Um, so you can use all those settings and that is how we make sure that these batteries cannot ever overcharge. Um, and then, we have this, which is the Vectron um, Protect. And what that does is my main output goes right to here with the amp, um, with the big fuse. And um, that makes sure that it will never discharge more than it should. So if it ever got lower than it should, which it never will because like I said, my inverters don't go that low anyway, that would disconnect it and it wouldn't allow it to um, output anymore. Now there's a 24 volt system. And so we have right here, there's a little box that changes it from 24 volt to 12 for all my lights. And um, all of our fans and our bedrooms and stuff like that all run off of 12 volt. Um, so that changes it over there. And um, then we have right here is our little gauge that reads the output. So let's go up and show you the gauges. All right, so this is my main operating system. Um, this is the on off switch for um, the inverter is a remote one, which is really great because um, it's kind of back tucked away in there and I don't want to run around and turn it on and off all the time for whatever reason I need to. Um, this is monitoring how many amps are being used right now. So if I turn on the coffee maker, you'll see it jumps right up um, because it's using all those amps all of a sudden. This is my battery monitor. So it shows the, um, how much percentage is left. We're at 73%. It also tells the volts, 23.3. Now this is a percentage that I set. So I have it as 19% is zero and 24.4, cause that's as high as I charge it, is 100%. You can set it to anything. If you're gonna mostly, if you never wanna discharge it less than you know, 21 volts or something, you can have that as zero and it will go all the way down to that. So it's a customizable thing that you can do. And then this is the controller that shows you everything. So here we have um, what the solar panels are reading. Since it's sunset, it's only 0.6 amps. 
and then it changes it to what it's charging at and once again it's just six amps and we go down here and I push down I'll tell the date and everything and here we have some really cool things so the day we've gotten 3.76 kilowatt hours today for the month we've gotten 74 kilowatts and for the entire time we've had this plugged in which is almost two years now we've acquired 2,221 kilowatt hours that is a lot of power when you're considering you're only getting like up only up to about four i think the max i've ever gotten is about five we've done 2000 kilowatt hours now that is everything that we use on the boat like i said we don't do any um solar solar is our only way of charging we haven't done any generators and we haven't plugged into shore power so um for uh, almost two years um, that's how much we've used now on a house or something we would have used a ton more just because you'd have like uh, electric stove electric um, dishwasher electric clothes dryer all those things take a ton of power but um, on the boat when you have a lot more power you use it with AC and stuff when you don't you make do so um, we've had Plenty that we've used but definitely on our next boat the biggest thing we're going to change is having more solar um, so that we can do more things and um, use more um, AC and stuff like that um, and with that being said we've also that's been our entire way of charging our dinghy battery which is an electric dinghy motor that we've used the last two years so um, these solar panels have used a lot. It's been a lifesaver for us. And it's something we're definitely gonna go with on our next boat. Um, now this is just our setup. I like the simplicity of having, here, let me go outside. See that beautiful sunset. Um, I like the simplicity of having the basic um, 12 volt system for most of your things and then having inverters for everything else and um, having the ability to modify those things when it calls for it when you have less less sun then you just use a little bit less um, and more and more as you use um, more things electric um, I'm just gonna use more and more things electric um, we switched over to an induction burner early on and um, there's just so many things that you can do with just electric so um, it's exciting to be able to um, get more solar on our next boat because we'll have a bigger roof and everything and to see what things we can do with that so um, like I said this is just our system um, figure out what works for you in your boat or your RV or whatever and um, yeah research it and figure out the best ways for you um, a lot of my research um, did come from YouTube channel Will Kraus which I'm sure you've heard of if you're probably watching this um, I'll have his link in the description below because he explains it just so well for a basic small off-grid system Thanks for joining us today. If you want to support the channel, then subscribe and hit the like button. Or check out our coloring book at www.floridakeyscoloring.com and on Amazon. See you next week.